That being a change in the minutes? Nope. Okay. So that language will go to Margie and Sean. Anything else, Carl? Mm -hmm. um, I had one, I thought that uh, under public comments, number seven, regarding the filling of the property um, on Elm Street, I thought at the end, I thought it was Ken and Tim who were conducting a site visit. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the only, let's see, I would suggest on number eight that we uh, invited constables Paul McGann and Bob Perry. Um, and then under the motion on the next page, um, okay. I would strike motion carried 2-3. I would just say the motion failed on a 2-3 vote and take out the last sentence and that motion carried 2-3. And that was all I had. Mitch, anything? Tim? No. All right. Um, with those changes then, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's a unanimous decision. Okay, we have the minutes from October 28th. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Carl? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Any changes? I made those corrections that I got. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Taking out acting chair. Karen, you were the one mm -hmm. that commented on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Members present. Okay. Because you were there. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We don't need action yeah. chair. Yeah. Okay. If hearing none, then I would um, ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. Um, all right. Let's see. Approval of warrants. We have two. We have a payroll warrant 9A in the amount of $303.90. Motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. Um, and then we have <coughs> check warrant number 15 in the amount of $15,484.71. Uh, items over $1,000, Crean equipment. I'm thinking that's the dozer. I see the cat on there, 2013 cat. Was that oh, Crean equipment? Oh, 2013 cat. Wow. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Um, what, what, what equipment was that, Karen? Well, it's Seals. from Crean. That's what I was Crean or Cream? Crean. Crean. It's a new Crean. C R E A N. From where? Let's see if I can find them in here. And I'll tell you in a second. Right behind Comcast. Crean. Okay, we're looking at seals, rings, cage, guards, cylinders, valves. Um, That's the tighteners on that excavator, or on that yeah. track, track loader. Undercarriage parts. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and how much was that? $1,382. Ferguson Waterworks, $2,010. That's, I'm guessing that that is... Um, that water, that's water department, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, in, which will, they'll reimburse the... Grand, you yep. know, the uh, the general fund. That would be for, um, what have we been buying? The digital meters. Uh, meters, meters. Um, let's see, Green Mountain Power, $1,145. John Ray and Son, $1,079. CAS, $1,601. Um, and Nortrack Equipment. That's John Deere. 
also is that the backhoe. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It is. Wait a minute, that's northern. Governmental Transaction Swinger. <laughs> Swivel Wrist Piston. Can I see that card? Mm -hmm. got the Department of Corrections for $1,058. I'm assuming that's signs. We continue to lose road signs. Um, yeah, but that. It seems as though as soon as they put them up, somebody, is, someone is taking them down. I, so I, I, had, just, I had discussed that issue with someone who thinks outside of the box sometimes. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And suggested, especially like something like Holy Smoke Road, mm -hmm. um, could we instead have nice large rocks located there and paint the name on the rock? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the state would go along with that. We've actually had to change over, you know, the bigger signs that we have. Mm -hmm. That's all even federal on our, mandate. Even on our local roads, there's states. Yeah, yeah for 911 and they wouldn't show up at night on the rocks unless you used glow in the dark paint I guess yeah. but how often do we spend a thousand dollars on signs is that that's for the more often than back we tobacco, right? want to uh -huh. we have to follow how about up the rocks painted and signs tractor backhoe <laughs> yeah that's John Deere yeah I mean how that be Swivel <coughs> wrist pistol <coughs> that machine's only a couple years old isn't it yeah, no. it's a 2011. Yeah. Why would, why would that piston be gone? Some things last for years. And we're I not talking about the John Deere tractor, right? The mower. No. That needs. No, this is the, this is the load around one end, backhoe on the other again. Mm hmm. Do you want to hold off on paying? You want to hold it? Well, no. Meeting? I mean, it's. I mean, it's obviously got to be paid. I'm just wondering what happened to it. Well, if Terry were here, he'd tell you precisely. Could you uh, check on that for us? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Marky. Okay. So again, the amount is fifteen thousand four hundred eighty-four dollars and seventy-one cents. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. And so, there you go, girl. We're signing that. Does anyone have any announcements? Tim? I do not. Mitch? No. Oh, there it is. On the second page there. Any announcements, Ken? Nope. Carol? No. I have none. Um, the only announcement that I actually have two. Uh, one is um, we have been lucky to have um, a young man in the community, Ian Taylor, who was our assistant water superintendent for three years. Um, and he has moved on. And I know that I speak for the board in thanking Ian for his three years uh, working with Joe Herman, our, our water superintendent, um, he's done a terrific job 
And he also is one of the volunteer members of our fire department um, for many years. So um, I would, again, on behalf of the board, like to thank Ian publicly for, for the, uh, the really good work that he did. For the water department, um, and also, just a heads up, there was a piece in the paper from the banner, thank you very much, just reminding folks that we do now have a 25-mile speed zone through the center of Shaftesbury. Um, so keep an eye on your speed as you come through. Um, we hope that folks will obviously take heed. Um, it's a real safety um, issue there as we have kids back and forth to school and also especially this time of year when it gets dark early um, and people are still out and about um, across the street <coughs> there. So please, um, again, be aware that it is 25 miles um, and uh, we don't want the sheriffs or the troopers having to pull you over <coughs> to remind you. So, And that's it for me. Um, Public comments, no. any public comments? No, I guess not. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Fisk, Bill Fisk, our treasurer. We have uh, financial reporting, <coughs> and we're all ears. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, Bill. I have uh, basically two uh, topics to address with you tonight. The first is to look at the fiscal year that ended June 30th and uh, to do an overview of that and then preliminary look at the current fiscal year that we're in. And I have information for September 30th that's still um, still being refined and I expect that if I can get on your agenda I'll have the October numbers for your next uh, board meeting in a couple of weeks and we'll be pretty close. Uh, Tax collections are coming in, and that, as you can imagine, is consuming a large part of our day. Uh, I've announced, or I'm about to announce, that we've added uh, hours. I'll be here um, all day Friday, half a day Saturday morning. Uh, while Monday's a holiday, I'll be here in the afternoon on Monday as well, and then all day Tuesday for uh, tax collections. But if, uh, as some individuals have said, they'd really rather not stand in line, then I'd suggest coming earlier and hopefully uh, beating the last minute rush. But I, I believe you have uh, in front of you a document that looks uh, columnar form like this. And the heading on it is... Uh, did we get that? I don't think we got that. Yeah. yeah. Did? The email went out. No. I, I don't didn't recall. see it. I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't see get it. it. What? No. Mm -mm. Didn't get it. That sent it to me only? What? I sent it to you. Only me? Distribution, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you'd send it to everybody. <clears throat> Wouldn't do that without giving you a look. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will quickly run copies. Okay. Well, we're, we're in this big time void here. Um, I, first of all, I apologize. But I just did want to have Margie have a chance to look at it first before I send it. She said, I usually expect that she would send it to the board. But um, generally speaking, um, what I'm doing is presenting first a town-wide view of our financial <coughs> position at June 30th. That's called a combining balance sheet. And um, we have essentially you know, a general fund where most of our activities in government are, are the accounting goes on for them in the general fund. We also have some other funds that um, we have a variety of labels but are currently being called designated funds. These are funds that are um, really controlled by the board. Uh, they are for specific purposes um, but not for capital projects. And then we have another group called the capital projects funds which are to replace equipment and to uh, do uh, larger projects and then finally we have a water fund which is our water department and that's kept separate because the accounting rules say that we have to use different principles for accounting for funds like water funds are considered to be analogous to a business type operation the uh, the users 
fees, the fees that the town generates, the revenue from users are supposed to finance the activities of the fund. All of our funds have positive fund balances at the end of the year. Um, and they are, um, Margie gets back here, we'll report that. As far as operations are concerned, our, our major activity is reported, all of our financial activity is reported in the general <coughs> fund. And our general fund has, um, as you might expect, our principal source of revenue or tax collections. And uh, we, also, <coughs> we also receive a substantial amount of state highway aid. I'll go back over these with some numbers following it, just to give you an overview now. As you know, the town charges for services, such things as the uh, um, permits for zoning and building, the, the access <coughs> permits at the landfill, uh, pay as you throw revenue. And we also uh, collect for dog licenses and beer and liquor licenses, which are really small items. Uh, we receive um, a share of fines uh, from the activities of the sheriffs and the uh, state police. Principally, the fines come from the, uh, the sheriff, although this year we had a, uh, a reasonably large amount of dog fines relative to our budget. Uh, we earn a little bit of interest in a really low interest rate environment. Uh, we get some fees from the trustees of public funds for uh, Howard Park. And uh, we, have, uh, we have some uh, employee contributions to the health insurance. Uh, and so all of those combine to equal our revenue. And then, as you know, we spend it on our various functions of government. Uh, a large uh, component is what's called general government. And that includes the activities of the administration, uh, the town administrator, <coughs> our insurance bonds. Um, professional services. And then we have the uh, town clerk's function, which is, uh, which is headed up as elections and vital statistics. Um, that's another uh, area. And then uh, we have uh, the building here itself, Cole Hall. And we have uh, the bookkeeping and uh, auditing and accounting functions, the, the treasurer's function, the delinquent tax collector's function. And then public works um, are another major area. Um, public works are a substantial part of our, our town expenditures. We also have public safety, which contain, includes the animal control officer, emergency management, and the fire department, uh, as well as the fire warden and law enforcement. The, the funds that we pay to the sheriff are included in this category. Uh, public works. Um, as I said, a major item, uh, administration, uh, highway construction and maintenance, uh, highway equipment maintenance, uh, the garage and the solid waste facility, um, along with street lights, Howard Park and the cemetery are all considered part of public works. And then um, we have uh, planning and development is another separate category, which is a uh, an important but, but financially relatively small percentage of our total budget. We have, um, normally we budget with voter approval, uh, community appropriations, and they're, um, they represented about $63,000 in round numbers last year. We pay tax to the county, which is about 26000 a year, a little more than that. Uh, we have some debt service expenditures to make. We finance through... Uh, through leasing arrangements, uh, several uh, equipment acquisitions, and that's an ongoing program. Um, that Those expenditures are about $270,000 a year in round numbers. So in total, we spend um, on our activities approximately um, $1.7 million. And then we have some transfers from our, our designated <coughs> funds to help uh, offset some of that and our capital projects funds and they amounted to about $200,000 coming in. And then we transfer out to uh, our various uh, what we call reserves and other designated funds of about 90000 So when we put the whole year together, um, we budgeted to spin down our fund balance by $124,000 last year, and we actually increased it by $44,000. So it's about a $170,000 swing in the fund balance um, 
for last year. Say that last part again. We were trying to spend it down, but we actually saved. Yeah, we, we budgeted, the town had budgeted to spend down the fund balance by $120,000. And in fact, our expenditures were less than budgeted. And as a result of that, uh, and our revenues were, were slightly higher than budgeted. So as a result of that combination, we didn't spend down the fund balance. It actually increased by the 44000 that's a swing of 170 <laughs> from memory. And that was, that was um, known to the board as uh, the year went on. We were meeting and going over financial statements and seeing that that was the trend. Um, now that you have some numbers in front of you, I can probably uh, do a little more in, a, in terms of detail. Um, if you want to stay with the, um, the, the, the budget versus actual and the general fund, uh, total revenue in the general fund uh, was about one million six hundred and sixty four thousand and we budgeted a million six hundred and twelve thousand so the difference there is a you know plus fifty two thousand on the revenue side in the general fund um, that difference is is made up uh, for example uh, thirty six thousand dollars of that was in uh, tax revenue um, you know every year we we collect a portion of current taxes and some aren't paid and they go delinquent and then delinquent tax collector collects uh, taxes as well. Uh, this year the delinquent tax collector uh, collected approximately $228,000 of, of delinquent taxes which brought the, um, the balance down to the neighborhood of $100,000 at the end of the fiscal year which was a little bit, bit was better than the year before so that contributed to that excess uh, result. Our state aid, um, actually our total intergovernmental revenues, which principally consists of state aid, um, were about 213,000 against a budget of 196. The, um, there's, we picked up about 8,000 over what we budgeted in highway aid, for example. And then the other major category was uh, the land use payments were a little bit more, about $5,500 more than budgeted. Um, the other, the other major, ca the other categories are are pretty close to budget, um, and overall, as I said, where revenues are about three percent over over budget. On the expenditure side, um, we spent less than budgeted. Uh, I'll go through the major categories. The general government, for example, uh, we budgeted to spend two hundred and seven thousand dollars and spent one hundred and eighty four thousand. Uh, most of that. Um, was in, um, in, for example, uh, the select board, all the select board members didn't take their stipend. Uh, so the, the stipend expense was less than budget. Uh, we had, um, I'm trying to pick out as I look down through here the major, the major categories. We were a little bit over insurance and bonds, but uh, you know, professional services were about 18, uh, call it $1,500 less. Our postage was less. Um, and as we get down through that, um, major differences, office equipment, we budgeted 22000 for office equipment and spent about 11000 So that, that makes up uh, that uh, about $23,000 of favorable expense variance in that category. The uh, coal haul expenses uh, were we're 19,000 against a budget of 24, so we picked up another $5,000 there as well. Um, major difference in coal hall was the heating fuel expenditure <coughs> versus actual. On the town clerk, the town clerk was under budget, means she spent less than her budget by approximately $3,000. The sorry, uh, what page are you reading from? I'm sorry, I'm reading from uh, the the general fund budget versus actual report. Page three. It's a two three column ten. report, 10. Three of 10. Two of Page 10. three of 10. Yeah. Okay. Three of 10, I'm sorry. Three of 10. Thank you. Two column report. Okay, and as you look down through there, um, you can see that um, most of those other categories. Let's <coughs> go past the, uh, the town clerk. You've got some other smaller categories that are pretty close to being on budget. The <coughs> listers were about $6,000, $6,400 under budget in terms of expense. 
So overall, general government was about $38,000 under budget on the expense lines we talked about. Public safety, um, animal control, you know, a little bit under 1600 under budget. The fire department was pretty close to being on budget. There were a couple thousand dollars under, though, in, in terms of expenditures. The fire warden, um, that department, we budgeted 16000 for a new vehicle, and that came in at a lower amount. So we're looking at about an $8,000 favorable variance there. Uh, law enforcement was just a little bit over. So overall, public safety was about uh, $12,000 under budget expense. On um, public works, uh, highway administration, um, pretty close, about, um, about 17000 under budget. Uh, highway construction was about uh, $40,000 over budget, so that took care of some of that. Highway maintenance was within uh, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars of budget. The garage was uh, under budget principally because the amount of professional services uh, that were budgeted weren't weren't expended. The solid waste facility. Uh, I'm on page seven now. Solid waste facility was about two thousand dollars over budget. Street lights were a little under. Howard Park was uh, a little over four hundred dollars over. Uh, the cemetery was under by approximately $3,400, $3,500. So overall, public works were about 13000 under budget in total. And then we get to the... Again, out of... Out of... 957 budgeted, 943 spent. <clears throat> That's pretty darn close. It's very close when you consider the, the, the breadth of the activities that are being budgeted mm -hmm. and, the, and the variability for factors, weather, for example, that we don't control, either temperature or the amount of precipitation. Okay, I only wanted to mention, since most people don't have the benefit of what we're looking at. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, we're looking at planning and development. Um, the total budget for that area was 25,000. The actual expenditures were 21. Uh, the um, the planning planning was was about 1,200 over, and uh, development review board was about uh, $4,000 under budget to make that up. Our community appropriations were um, were pretty close to budget. A couple of items didn't pass that time, so. There were no expenditures where the voters did not approve it, so we budgeted 63,800 uh, in community appropriations and spent uh, 62,700. Um, the county tax was a little less than budget, about $400 less than budget. Our debt service expenditures were a little bit, uh, a little bit higher than budget, um, and we're looking at about. Uh, Oh, about nine thousand dollars difference there. So total. Why, why would why would the debt service be be something that could either be over or under? I mean, debt service. You know what the the interest rate is? Is that we're borrowing money throughout the year and it varies? Well, I, no, it's not variable interest rates. But we had we had a, uh, equipment acquisitions. Fire truck. The fire truck was higher than planned. Yeah, we had, that we, you had asked this question at a previous meeting, and that was the. Yeah. That was what the uh, the issue was. There was essentially it was the fire truck was a piece of that, nice. uh, and then the uh, the uh, the John Deere loader and the, inter and the international trailer were also more than were budgeted. The actual acquisition turned out to be more mm -hmm. than than was actually budgeted, and that's where the difference is. Once we have the lease established, we know what the payment yeah, terms right. are, and that that stays the same. But first year, we're we're estimating we're going to pay to acquire an asset, and then we find out we pay a little more, and that throws the debt service schedule off. Um, we transferred in. Um, essentially, we transferred in what we budgeted, except that we did not transfer in the sixteen thousand from the fire warden because we didn't spend that much on the fire warden's truck, and the garage <laughs> reserve did not. We weren't required. We didn't have to go to the garage reserve and take in as much as we had budgeted. So that that's a favorable variance there. Uh, on the other hand, we spent um, 
uh, fire equipment fund transferred in more than had been budgeted uh, for this fire truck acquisition and the paving reserve uh, transferred in an unbudgeted expense that's about $64,000. So overall our operating transfers um, were about $201,000 against a budget of 146. So we're looking at about a $55,000 difference there. In terms of the transfers out, they're budgeted uh, transfers and they're all uh, according to budget. So we, uh, as we said, we had budgeted to have $124,520 reduction in fund balance. That's what was on the, uh, the ballot. <coughs> And we actually had an increase in fund balance of about forty-four thousand dollars. So we ended the year with a uh, a fund balance of uh, round number three hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars. Which you know. You know, part of that is that we don't budget for collection of delinquent taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I know some towns do. <coughs> Well, we also, though, our budget includes all of what we anticipate billing for taxes. So our gross, our current taxes budget is always, we're always going to be under budget at that line that item because we're not going to collect right. in the differential. If you add the, if you add the deferred, uh, excuse me, the delinquent taxes and the current tax revenue together, mm -hmm. we're looking at, uh, you know, $1,310,000 against a budget of $1,302,000. Mm -hmm. Plus we get, we get the delinquent tax interest. And the other thing, we get some um, payment with, from the state uh, as a uh, compensation to us for the cost of, of dealing with the um, the state property tax adjustment payments, we get a very small percentage of that. It's about eight, it was about eighteen thousand dollars last year that we received. And the, the total amount in round numbers that the state pays, uh, and this is all education, but we're we're the agent that collects that, uh, is about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of state payments coming in. Uh, Shaftesbury taxpayers. So that's that's the big activity statement, and then you have the. Now we'll go back to the combining balance sheets, uh, all funds, June thirty. Well, just a quick question. Sure. For curiosity, how does how does our budget look compared to other comparable towns around? If you know, in terms of our expenditure and our collection. Well, in turn, you know, that's a good question. I don't know that I, I've done a specific uh, look at it. I've asked the question in different conversations, but, you know, everyone is unique in a sense. I mean, you, know, you can say a community of 3,500 people should spend on a per capita basis X dollars, but I think it's a function of, of many things, and, and one of them is, um, uh, one of the major things is the amount of services you provide to your citizens. and. Uh, you know the cost of maintaining your roads, and uh, I don't know that uh, I don't know that you can come down to. Ken probably could do this in, on the back of an envelope, but I can't. The the um, you know the cost per mile of road when you've got changes in elevation, you've got changes in, in, in road coverage, all the issues that make road maintenance difficult. So I think it, it's somewhat difficult. It's a long-winded answer to say I don't have specific information. I don't know if Margie does, for example, if, if that's around in the I state. I would love to spend some more time because I'd like to see us compared ourselves to other equivalent towns with a similar grand list, maybe, and budget. Um, yeah, but as, as Bill was saying, you can't compare apples right, to apples because apples somebody's apples. apple might be a little bigger than ours, or right. ours might be a little bigger well, than somebody else's. And well, I, I, the roads is a very good point. Similar grand list. Well, yeah, you have to look at, at road mileage, obviously. But it would be interesting to see what we're doing per capita, let's say, for fire. Or, um, or I'd be is, curious whether the services other towns are providing that we aren't, or that mm -hmm. we are and they aren't. And highways. And, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's not just the mileage, Carol. It's whether you got how much black top you got versus how much dirt yeah, road that's, you got. That's yeah, right. that's my point. Because right. when you start laying down, about <clears throat> dirt. you start putting down black top, and you better hang on. Because you got to have a better base, you got to have, sure. you know, before you put the black tap down. Yeah, well, that's your capital investment. Right? Yeah, and then it's, then it's more more to maintain it. It's more you, to maintain than dirt roads. People think it is, or it is more because it's, it's a lot more. You can go grade a black a dirt road, yeah, four or five times a year, and it don't cost you a lot of money. You go pave it every four years or something, it'll kill you. <clears throat> 
Good point. It's an interesting question, you know, peer groups, comparing yourself to peer groups. Well, yeah. I would assume most, a Definitely. lot of people would ask that question. How do we look? Because mm -hmm. we often hear how much money, you know, our taxes are too high, our taxes are too high. I like, nice to be able to say, well, compare it to Sunderland or compare it to Dorset or compare it to something comparable. Well, I had a gentleman come in to pay his taxes, and he was in last year as well, and he said that his, his, his second home is here, and of course you're dealing with, he said, you know, uh, and he was, it was a, I would, it struck me as a substantial tax bill. And he said, I pay this quarterly in New Jersey. <laughs> so he said, I like this. And well, so it's all relative, I guess, to right, where you are and right. your income level and the type of home you're living in. But um, in any event. Um, so anyway, uh, now if we could just uh, take a quick look at the uh, combining um, balance sheet all the months. Uh, you can see that this is where we ended the year. Um, and you know it's it's good to give you an idea of the the scope the magnitude of the town financially um, excuse me obviously the money that's sitting in the capital projects fund for example at the water department can't be used for general government operations but at least you understand that you have you know we have uh, substantial financial um, assets in the town and these do not cl include um, any um, hard assets, equipment, that sort of thing, aren't recorded in town financial, and at this level of town financial reporting. Um, but if you look at it, you can also see that, you know, our total assets, when you compare them to our total liabilities, we've got really strong coverage ratios. You know, our general fund has a, roughly a two and a half to one uh, ratio of assets to liabilities, which in theory means, you know, we're, we're comfortable, we're covered, um, we can pay our bills as they become due, um, and then that, and that, as you go across <coughs> across the board, you'll see different relationships here. <coughs> Generally, uh, all the funds are well funded and um, are very um, very strong. Um, the, the the what goes into some of these, just to, to kind of give you a brief summary, the designated funds and. and um, and this is some a process that'll be you know continue to refine. But the landfill, the listers reappraisal, the contingency fund, the park fund, Hook Memorial, and the audit are all part of that group that have characterized as the designated funds. I mean they're going to be used for purposes of of general government. Um, the capital projects funds are other um, are other funds. Uh, you know fire equipment replacement, uh, equipment replacement sidewalk fund, the coal hall renovation fund, which also has the garage as part of that, uh, Florence BB Memorial. And then we have a hybrid fund that we, uh, I keep trying to figure out, you know, I think what I'm going to, what we're going to have to do eventually, I keep talking with Margie and I talk about this, is to consider whether we should break it down into a couple of pieces. We have this uh, uh, municipal grants uh, category, this fund 310 that has both um, oh, yeah. Grants Nightmare. in it and real, real right. third party designated activity. And then we also have stuff the town has used to, to uh, I think of examples of that might be the when we had the 250th anniversary mm -hmm. as an example of the street dance or some of those other activities mm -hmm. that are in there. So there, it's kind of a hybrid. Um, and then. Uh, so that's basically the, the, the 2013 results. I'll be continuing to, um, to build the financial statements for the auditors for the, uh, the town report and the report uh, to the voters. And are there any questions of me at this point? In the uh, I'm thinking that if we want to preserve the under expenditure in the highway budget for that garage, then we're going to need to ask the voters to take that portion of the fund balance and underexpend that amount and reserve it for highways. Well, it's as uh, as I think, uh, at least as I understand the the rules, the law that funds uh, funds designated or appropriated <coughs> for highway use. Uh, if, if there's an under expenditure of the budgeted item, those funds have to be retained and applied to 
highway use in the subsequent year. I know, but we just have never figured out the mechanism. Well, that's an interesting question because, you know, I've... Yeah. One approach in one town was then to under budget by that amount in the ensuing year. <coughs> uh, but I think our approach has been to make sure that it's the voters that, for transparency purposes, the you know, <coughs> code work, the transparency, you make sure the voters understand that we did understand underspend on professional engineering services and therefore we'd like to carry that forward and apply it to <coughs> professional engineering services as may arrive or it goes into a reserve fund. However, they want to do it. Well I guess you know it, it also depends on, on where we we I think it depends. I'm not, you know, trying to make a categorical statement here. But I think that if we look at the, uh, the various major categories of, of, um, of highway, um, you know, we, we are about $13,000 underspent on administration, but then we go over mm -hmm. to um, right, and construction we're and we're over right. by yeah. uh, $40,000, so. Right. Um, but if we, if we look at the garage, I mean, again, you know, we budgeted $60,000 for professional services, and that was the intent on that was for engineering um, services. Um, and, of course, the bond didn't pass the first time around. Um, but didn't that just mean that we didn't have a corresponding transfer in? That's right. That's so, right. Yeah. And we, we, we looked at the operating transfers in, there was, I think I commented that there was less transferred in from the, right. uh, <coughs> because we didn't, we didn't spend that. Right. So that would be something, well that's true, it's yeah. reserve funds. And we're actually looking at the year end of 2013, so our current budget, I think we actually brought that, brought that, do you have a, an up to date, um, a two-date balance sheet for us? Or I have one as of September 30. Huh? Okay, great. Um, I don't remember how much we budgeted to transfer in. But I think we did. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And one of the problems is that the, the timing of budgeting versus the, the operations you're budgeting now when you don't know what the results will be for the rest of this fiscal year. Uh, you know. Yeah, actually we only, we only budgeted $2,000 professional services for the garage. And that's because this budget went together. Mm -hmm. You're right, before we knew that it wasn't going to be approved, so we didn't spend that money. So does that mean if we, if we have a positive bond vote in December, and we have not budgeted for the professional services that we'll need to spend money on right away in order to go out to bid in the winter. Um, how do we do that? I mean, we have, we have money sitting mm -hmm. in a reserve fund mm -hmm. for that purpose, but um, do we, well, <laughs> How, do, how, how would we do yeah, that? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Well, that's a good, uh, this is not a good answer, but it's a good question to ask, I think. And, and um, also, I think it, it goes to the, you know, what the authority of the select board is to expend and, and whether, <coughs> and whether um, you, you previously budgeted this amount, uh, you didn't expend it, it became part of your fund balance. Uh, in theory, does that become just general a uh, general pool of assets that can be reallocated in the next budget, um, or can you, it contain the that earmark, if you will, 
mm. going forward? Um, I don't know the answer. I think it's a great question. I don't know the answer. I don't know, um, you know, practically it would seem that you would want to be able to, um, to use those funds. Um, I think that um, personally, I would look to. Um, I'd, I'd certainly want to do my homework on what what the what the uh, authority is to 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 make an unbudgeted expenditure mm -hmm. um, to be sure that I was I was on you know, fairly safe ground. Now, Marty, do you have a better thought than that? I mean, I I don't know the answer. I don't because I I mean I what I used to seeing it is that it's every other year you carry it forward so it's not really available till after July 1 with voter action so because you're applying it to the 15 budget mm -hmm. but so we have a fund balance now for a number of little accidents and and good good news and yeah I I, I mean we've I certainly overspent line items mm -hmm. calcium you know, as an example, sand, salt in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the it, again, if the community supports the garage vote the second time around, see, you, know, you would you have to say that the intent on the part of yeah. the community was um, to go forward with that, and they voted on it, you know, a year ago. But. Are you I, suggesting you, maybe they'd have to vote again on that? I, 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 we wouldn't have, <laughs> we almost wouldn't have time in, all, in order to have, you know, an optimal bidding. Um, we, we would need the engineering services fairly you. soon after the, the vote in order to be able to catch that sweet spot of, of interest rates and construction bids, frankly. Um. <clears throat> the garage, what, what we, you know, I guess the question I'd have is what do we have a, uh, in the garage reserve? Right. Could that be tapped? That's, that's what I was referring to. I think to. that would yeah. be yes. I think yeah. the answer to that is yes, because that was, that was, that, that <coughs> established, the establishment of that fund was approved by the voters. Right. So right. they, they essentially, um, granted the authority to use it. Mm -hmm. And that was that line item, that $60,000 expense item for professional services was, was, um, um, was the partnered, yeah. if you will, with the reserve fund transfer in. Mm -hmm. um, so and that it seems logical to me that that's where you would take the money from. Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. And it's been already approved by the townspeople. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think that's, you know, I'd agree with that. Um, that is a concept. But, but if you overspend your general fund budget, I don't think you, you I mean, it's a different situation than what we're talking about. Right. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. right. The 60,000 yeah. was anticipation of transferring those funds in from right. the garage reserve, which right. we didn't do. Right. Okay. Well, this is good news. What well, is good news? And I also point out to you that um, um, the the current year's budget, the fiscal year ended 14 budget, uh, <coughs> incorporates uh, a concept of spending down by $120,000 the fund balance again. So that was budgeted to to do that. So right. if if this if these numbers played out. According to budget, at the end of the year, you have $120,000 um, uh, excess of expenses over revenue mm -hmm. for the fiscal year, and that would pull the fund balance down. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, it may it may do that. It may be, be it could be worse, and it could be better, mm -hmm. depending on on all the variables. And we're just getting into the season right, right now. Right. Right. Well, why right. wouldn't we be be looking to reduce the tax rate then if we had that kind of excess? Well, that's a question. I mean, I think I think because a, my recollection is that the town has rather consistently had excess funds over the last several years, mm -hmm. and um, I I know that um, where I've come from, and I've said this before in the past, where where you have an you know, excess of funds one year, okay, 
uh, that may be an aberration. You have an excess of funds two years, you already have a trend. You have it three years, where I used to come from, they'd be beating down the doors of the town hall to say, cut my tax rate. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I would ask that question. If, mm -hmm. if we are going to have potentially that kind of excess, and I grant you, it's not going to be more than, who knows, 50, and, and the town of 3,500 may be, you know, $2, $10 a year, um, maybe that somebody will be getting back. But still, if, if we have excess, I think that's something the board needs to consider whether or not to cut back on it as opposed to putting it in some other fund. Well, and uh, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I mean, obviously it's a policy decision mm -hmm. you make. Um, if, we, if we achieve budget this year, we will have a fund balance of somewhere around $220,000, $30,000, which would be probably five cents on the tax rate. But what that does is, I think, personally, I think you need to have some working capital. I mean, that may not be a government term that we should use, but I think you need to have some funds to buffer situations where maybe uh, we have a really bad winter and we spend more money than we plan to, um, you know, and rather than go out and borrow to cover, uh, you know, current expense borrowing to cover that, you know, we, we have this, this cushion, if you will, I agree. You shouldn't have it. We shouldn't have it building, and that's the point of budgeting to reduce it. But I think there has to be some revenue because if if you eliminate the fund balance, if we have swings in expenses, that's going to result in swings in tax rates. Well, I understand. I think, my, you know, my, my reason for bringing this up is not to advocate. That's what mm -hmm. we're supposed to be doing. It would be that if we're going to have it, then and we don't reduce the tax rate, then the board, I think, has an obligation to provide a rational basis why we're not. And you just provided a very good rational basis, mm -hmm. one of perhaps several. So uh, I, I only raise it, if you will, as a, as a devil's advocate for mm -hmm. hearing, I'm sure every one of us here, I pay too much taxes, I pay too much taxes. Of course, most of those taxes are school tax, but nobody cares. Um, it's, you know, I pay too much taxes. Good, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. What's the uh, rule of thumb for a cushion? Well, you know, we, we, um, we talked about that at a couple of different meetings, Tim, and um, I don't know that I can cite something authoritatively, like that you should always have two and a half months expenses or whatever, but, um, you know, it's basically, um, we concluded, I believe, and I don't want to speak for anybody but myself, that uh, approximately a $200,000, 200, dollars $220,000 fund balance was appropriate to deal with, um, deal with working capital needs. You know, we start the fiscal year uh, needing to borrow money. And until we start getting tax collections, we're, we're borrowing. We've got, to, we're out $200,000 on our town's line of credit right now that we'll, we'll be paying back. We won't, we have a $400,000 line. We won't be drawing the full line. We stopped drawing it. We don't have to anymore. But we had a couple of months where, because of um, where our debt service payments fall, for example, we have heavy cash outflows. And so if we didn't have anything there at all, we'd be looking at, at borrowing that much more. And that doesn't take into account what happens if we have a, what happens if we have an un, planned experience financially that we, we have a, a bad Irene. winter, an <laughs> Irene, something happens. Um, but every year you have to borrow to get, to kickstart the fiscal year essentially? We have, we have to borrow, yes, to cover the cash, short-term cash flow, yeah. yeah. And wouldn't it make sense if we have a fund balance just to, instead of trying to burn it down, just to hold it for, for that purpose and earn interest on it instead of instead of paying somebody else interest for? Well, I, first of all, I think, yes, as a principal, I agree. That's exactly what I'm, I'm recommending, too, that we have some balance. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think we're, we're, we should be in the business of accumulating, trying to accumulate as much, amass as much as we can and have a, a fund balance that's equal to our annual expenses, for example, or anything like that. But we do need some financial buffer and, and I think what, we, what we've, the board has talked about has been around that, you know, trying to get mm -hmm. to that 200 to $230,000 range. Um, and maybe some of that is, is um, I try, I, I'm 
admittedly somewhat fiscally conservative. I'd rather see us have a larger fund balance and not have to worry about, gee, next year the tax rate's going from, uh, from where it has been. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 45 cents or something you know, along those lines. I mean, we, we have, we're at the mercy of the schools anyway. We don't control the education tax rate, and that's a big hit on the taxpayers. But uh, we can, the town, we, the, the board can control the amount, uh, to some extent, the tax rate on, um, on, the, on the, uh, the taxpayers from the town. And the board's been very good at that. I mean, it's kept a level tax rate. Uh, and that's, that's, really, uh, that's really good. And uh, yeah, I think we're all saying the same thing, maybe in slightly different ways. It's important to have some fund balance, but it's also important to recognize that this is the taxpayer's money and we don't want to, we don't want to just amass it to see how big a pile we can make. And uh, so there's the trade-offs. Well, and over the years, we've also taken those surplus funds and asked the taxpayers if they wished to fund reserve funds. And for the most part, um, they have agreed. You know, we put a good bit into Coal Hall one year, um, helped us to match some of the grant money that we got. Uh, certainly the garage fund is, is another good example. Um, some of the equipment reserve funds are used for that, so. Mm -hmm. So just, um, if I could keep going on, on uh, for a few minutes more, and then I'll, I'll, I'll finish my remarks on the the operating results for um, the three months ended September 30. And as I said, I'll be back in two weeks, and I'll bring this up to four months ended uh, October 31st. I don't know. Do you have that? Mm, I don't oh, well, why don't Why don't I do this then? Why don't I just give you a quick overview? Yeah, yeah. overview. And, and, and as I'm running, I'm running out of, off my my time schedule. I think I started early. So you, you got you you did. So you're okay. You're okay. Right. Well, you have a little cushion there, just like the surplus. But <laughs> <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Where we are right now is that. Um, as you know, tax billings have gone out and, and tax collections are coming in. And, and uh, my sense is, and I, I looked at the numbers, that I, we are ahead of where we were last year in terms of tax collection. So um, there's, there's uh, people are paying. Um, our is that to say you expect that we exceed what we did last year recently or ahead right now? Well, I think we're ahead right now. I mean, I think, you know, we'll, we'll probably have a certain number of delinquencies mm -hmm. and uh, maybe what we won't have is, is a completely crazy day on November 12th with a line of people sneaking out to the parking lot waiting to pay their taxes. <laughs> that's, that's my hope that it doesn't happen that way. And Judy's hope and Margie's hope and everybody <laughs> else's hope downstairs. Um, our major, you know, our major revenue is tax. It's an, we're modified accrual, which means that we recognize the um, the amount of revenue we expect to collect within 90 days, uh, and excuse me, 60 days, and that's the amount that's showing in current tax revenue. We build, we build <coughs> more than that. We build what we had uh, uh, the million three. But some of that's uh, considered to be deferred until such times it's actually collected. The state prebate payments were a little more this year, and they've been uh, applied, so they're recognized. Uh, our our uh, state highway aid is is come in again. It's it's higher than we budgeted. Uh, we received in October another state highway payment, so we have right now just a few hundred dollars uh, short of of uh, $80,000 in state highway aid, which means that, um, you know, we're gonna be, if it plays out for the rest of the year, we'll be about 7,000 over in budgeted revenue at that, at that level. Um, our access permits are, uh, are moving along. Our pay as you throw for is, uh, is about $9,000 for two months, or three months rather. So, uh, you know, we're, it looks like we're tracking pretty close to budget on that. Um, zoning permits are, are doing well. Um, we don't see dog license revenue this time of year. Uh, our fines are, um, you know, they, they vary. Um, you know, we're, we're under budget right now, but we're early in the year. Uh, interest is um, 
believe me, we're we're not earning a lot of interest right now, and it's uh, unfortunate. Who is? That's the question. You know, who, I'd like to know who they are. I mean, I don't, I don't want to buy. Uh, I don't think the town wants to buy uh, Siberian railroad bonds or anything like that. But, you know, it's uh, it's the market we're in right now. Um, you know, cemeteries are going fine. Um, so overall, you know, the big the big categories, everything seems to be on track. It's it's amazing how as the year goes goes on, it's not just one, one month or one twelfth or one quarter. It, yeah. it builds up cumulatively. On the expense side, um, we are um, our our general government expenditures, some of which are front end loaded. For example, we pay all of our insurance and bond premiums right after right. the beginning of the year. So we're we're a little bit again over budget. We budgeted 45, we paid 46 on that. Uh, if you take that out of the equation, everything else is tracking um, down where it should be. Some dues and subscriptions again, front end loaded. So we've got half of our budget spent on that. But everything else is running in the general government area around where it should be at this time of year. Um, same thing with um, with Cole Hall with um, with the, the, the clerk's uh, office, uh, finance, auditing is uh, auditing is really well below budget right now. Um, the treasurer, the tax collector, they're all running right on track. The listers are running, uh, you know, for three months they're at twenty percent. So you know that's fine. So overall, you know, with the with the things I talked about, general government is is pretty much on track with its budget in terms of. Um, Public safety, um, fire is about a third of its budget, but again, it has expenses that come in uh, on the front end. Um, in terms of public works, um, right now the highway administration is, a, is uh, about 22% of its budget. Construction is in maintenance is uh, at 6% of budget right now. Um, equipment maintenance is about 20% of budget. So. Uh, as we're, we're going through these various categories, solid waste, 17%. So you can see that, you know, the, the numbers are variable. They're not linear. It's not, you know, one twelfth each month. Uh, make budgeting easier if it was, I think. But right now, total public works, 16% of budget. Um, planning, same, same kinds of results. Uh, we haven't paid any of our community appropriations yet. We won't do that until after all the tax revenues and have settled with the schools. And that'll go out at the end of the year. Um, our debt service has mostly been paid, uh, and this year, uh, if you look at debt service, it's it's about 99.26 percent of budget. So it's much closer because we didn't have the wild cards of new equipment dropping in there to confuse the issue. So overall, um, we are uh, we're on track with the budget uh, in the general fund from where we we thought we would be at this time. Um, that's kind of the uh, the thumbnail on the, the three months. As I said, I'll be back in two weeks with four months and more details for you, and we'll see that you get your reports before the day of the meeting. And I apologize to you for that. No, it's my right. doing. Uh, anyway. Any any other questions for Bill? Good report. All right, thank, thank, you. thank you very yes, much, thank Bill. You for your help. Very thorough. All right, so now we move to our own, hard to imagine, fiscal year 15 budget preparations. <laughs> That's us, gang. 15, too. I know. Um, so Margie has put together a bud budget preparation schedule for us. Did you all receive that? Yes. Yeah. Um, And Margie's made some notations for our meeting today. She and I had talked a little bit about this. Um, in terms of how the board chooses to approach um, putting the budget together. Traditionally, what we have done, or for the years that I've been on the board, um, we have brought in department heads Margie will, if she has not yet, 
gotten them, you'll soon be getting their department budgets, right. draft right. budgets. Yep. You want to just go through the oh sure the process just, for especially uh, for some of our new board members. It it used to be that um, every department head would come and speak before the select board, and I I uh, at least when I first got here. Uh, and I think that that's with your major departments, but also even all your elected officials. I, I think that's a good idea. Some folks who are department heads are just not available for evening meetings. It's, it's a rarity, but uh, I, I think the procedural question I have is uh, the last, just the last couple of years, we've worked on a draft preliminary budget first. And then when we meet with people, you meet with your department heads and you're able to ask questions um, to refine what it is their, their proposal is. And then we build uh, the what I would call your first draft budget. And then you take a look at your final bottom line, let's say by the middle of December, and then you all go, <gasps> and then we end up having to whittle back. Uh, you look at your operating transfers. Uh, and uh, other revenue sources and well, reducing your expenditures and it's just a natural progression. Uh, some towns will just, their boards will say right at the outset of the process, look, we're holding the tax rate, boom. You gotta work within that framework, come back to us with a budget that does X. You know, uh, So that's one approach. Um, it depends on kind of what you would like to do. Uh, there's value in meeting with all your elected officials and mm -hmm. several board members haven't met with people. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could, it would, maybe we could just pack two workshops where you, or some on camera sessions. You, uh, that's why we've scheduled 5 p.m. meetings. You can meet just for an hour and a half before your regular meetings on budget. Uh, and then we have the in-between meetings in December would be your workshops. Uh, I, I think we're on a, uh, it's only getting easier to budget with a better financial reporting system in place and the more we're used to that and mm -hmm. I think it's making it very, it's very helpful. Uh, Margie, you have one notation in here, major issues for fiscal year 15 budget. Mm -hmm. What would you see as some of the major issues? Well, whether or not we're going to have a garage vote, we don't know until December. Right. Mm -hmm. What would I see? Uh, by department, I think we've got some policy decisions to make in solid waste. Uh, I primarily, and mm -hmm. how we deliver services, uh, I think you're going to, at the price of well over $100 a household, I think these household hazardous waste collection days are are quite expensive. Uh, I'd love to see us continue to do two a year, but I, the, um, the attendant cost to these collections is is up there. Even, even when we take in the revenue? Uh, I mean, I well, I, I, I no, we'll, we can look at that in more detail. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but the other component of that is used oil, how we're going to correct that situation at the landfill. So, and then the other big issue, how it's going to play out um, in budgeting is how we're going to, if there's any change in animal control, in the way we approach animal control. Uh, emergency services, we are, I just heard today that I don't think we're going to have a generator grant so that our community shelter mm -hmm. at the elementary school is, uh, is still in need of the transgen switch and all the wiring to get that generator up and running. It's there. The one that we got from Bennington? Yep. But we still have a $30,000 investment that we need to look at. Well, I thought we funded $15,000 yeah, 15 last year. So we're going to need, I know at 
right off. We need to budget another 15. Unless we in emergency services for next year, plus you will have an ongoing maintenance fee uh, for that generator. generator over time, which is a new element of the budget. Well, the other the other option is to talk with the school. We've already put 15,000 into it. No, um, so. Perhaps the school. I mean. We have more students over there. It may be that they won't be quite as squeezed in terms of their own budgets um, with additional students. But anyway, I think that's a subject for discussion in terms of sharing that that extra fifteen thousand dollars. Highways, your equipment. There's usually a rotational schedule for equipment replacement. Uh, but the additional issue is the, the uh, roadside mower and whether or not we're going to take action to uh, bite that bullet with a used piece of equipment or new or um, contract out services the way the town had originally done several years back. And there are pros and cons to both approaches. Uh, Parks. I don't see a major, uh, any major issue there. Um, I, th I, I think it's going to be your, how you handle your fund balance and mm -hmm. what you're going to do with your tax rate and. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Certainly no um, crises here, though. I mean, uh, just. Decisions on how it's best operational to, decisions. Mm -hmm. Just operational decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what is the story on that mower, Margie? I'd like the foreman to give you a better accounting on that. I I do know we're we're uh, that it it worked as many hours over the summer as it was broken. So mm. we would have fifty percent field and fifty percent shop hours, perhaps. I mean, it was. Uh, by having your own your own mower, though you're mowing, you can mow as long as there's no snow. You can uh, mow all summer. You keep an employee busy, but if that's the only well, reason. Well, no. What, I, what I'm asking is. What's wrong with it physically? Yeah, I mean, what's what's the what's the cost? Phone. What's the cost? He needed a new foreman. transmission. Apparently. And he will report. He he's yeah. going to have to report and justify. There are a number of things. It's a 1988. And apparently it's... My dump truck's a 1988. It runs every day. I assume uh, that Terry wants <laughs> to buy... My wife is older and she's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What was that, Tim? I assume Terry wants to buy a new roadside mower. Is it? Uh, he's going to recommend the town does. And do we know how much that it's going to cost? He's gathering costs as we speak. So would the board like to have department heads in here? <coughs> should, that be, should that be scheduled into this? Well, are and we I asking the, the department major. heads to come in we have all and of make them. a proposal for their, for their budgets or just to come and tell us what they're doing? Uh, no, what, uh, what I'd like is when we look at highways, for example, um, we have a draft budget and you actually spend time clarifying and getting questions and answered by your foreman as to what we um, are doing. And then we have to take a look at your equipment re replacement schedule. I mean, some of this ends up sugaring out at the bottom, you know, at the very end of the budget, period. Oftentimes I find that's when we decide, look, we're just going to have to push that truck purchase back into the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess my thought is, if we're going to prepare the budget, mm -hmm. and by the time we call them in, it's going to be at the end, isn't that putting no. the car before the horse? Or? No, I mean, the, the, the way, if, if Margie, if the way you have this, it's when you have these names down here, right. you were proposing that they actually came in when you have but auditors, yeah. clerk if the listers. board is is the board is yep. is yep. willing. I mean, yep. I've already met with the fire chief, so we've got a draft budget okay. for him. Okay. And uh, similarly, emergency services, I know pretty well. We're going to have to be the high, putting the highway budget together is going to take a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think, yeah, if you get your elected officials in, it's a chance to meet and discuss and find out how delivery of services seems to be progressing. Is there anything that they're truly missing mm -hmm. do you, uh, to enable them to do their jobs? I mean, we have that conversation, but oftentimes the board needs to hear and see mm -hmm. from elected officials. So I recommend that you always hear at least from your the Board of Listers, uh, that would be another conversation to have regarding um, appraisal services. I think we can continue doing what we're doing without a charter change. Without um, a what? A charter, not charter a charter change, change. but a, a adoption or partial adoption of a charter where we actually bite the bullet as a community and decide that we will be appraising property with the services of a professional assessor. Um, right now we're using a qualified appraiser. And I have to understand the legislative action that took place this last spring to differentiate between the two. Mm -hmm. But um, many, it's happening all over the state. A lot of small towns are having to become increasingly reliant on professional appraisers and not listers who are lay people mm -hmm. doing their very best to keep up with complex valuation software and uh, land schedules and this and that. Mm -hmm. Do we have a schedule when the next uh, appraiser should, appraisal should happen yet? Or I mean, is it, are we within That's driven by we're, your, we're not 80% of our sales, grand list yet, right? Your sales we're, ratios. We're probably 110% right now. I think we were a little right. over 100% yeah. last yeah. year we were. So not so I can't imagine anything going up. I can't imagine We're not anywhere close to needing and reappraisal. Okay, so we no, got a lot close. of money in that fund, reappraisal fund. Yeah, and we get, we get more each year from the state. We get a certain amount per parcel, so we, we get about an additional fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars from the state okay. towards maintaining the grand list, and that goes yeah. into the reappraisal fund. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, I I would like to have the department heads come in and make their pitch. Mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. would be helpful for me just because I haven't met everybody at least, and we've that got some Monday, other new members 9, here too. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, sounds like a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Can so people, you're suggesting by December 9 that we would have the proposed budget for each of those people coming? Oh, in? yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, is 5 o'clock okay for mm -hmm. workshops mm -hmm. to begin, mm -hmm. even if we had food? Especially if you have food. If we have, yeah, the 25th, the 2nd, the 9th, you have to leave. On the I have 10th. to leave on the 10th, so if you make an evening on the 9th, that's not going to be very good. I'm going to be well, packing. yeah, everybody's going to be. We're going to need that I, meeting, I, Carl. Mm -hmm. We have to meet. I thought we were. Um, okay. Yep. That's. Is that a regular board meeting? Mm -hmm. No. Your no, underlined no, underlined 2nd. dates are when you're going to be on okay. camera and when you have your regular mm -hmm. meetings. So the ninth is a regular meeting. No, the no. workshop only. I thought we had tried. I thought we were going to try to meet on Thursday, the previous Thursday, for Carl. Fifth, December fifth. I thought we had talked about doing something like that. I think that. you're right. I yeah. We did. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're gonna move the. Gonna uh, un unless unless anyone has a conflict. Well, you have Monday, work? December second is a. Yeah, we have a workshop. We have a workshop, but that's also your information on the bond vote. That's your right. Informational meeting. Yep. Tuesday's the bond vote. Wednesday, DRB meets. Thursday, the 5th. You were kind of, is that what you're contemplating instead of Monday the 9th? Well, okay. you know, that works for me. Carl has a you I know, would yeah. prefer to make a major, yeah. major commitment, yeah. and I don't, you know, I, I, you do I a prefer early. not I prefer to. Yeah, okay, so it'll be the 5th instead of the 9th. Yeah. Okay. Is that, does that work for everybody? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Say again, what, where, what are we doing on the If we meet, the, so that'll be a busy week, the first week of December. December 2nd, Monday. Oh, just change the 9th to the 5th? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Thursday yeah. the 5th.
What time are we planning? 5 p.m. Yeah, I'd say if we can keep those workshops at a consistent time. Does that work? Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. It'll be dark by then anyways. Okay. And at that point, I, you know, I think it, 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 we'll see how we're doing. You know, if we need to squeeze another meeting in there exactly. before the 16th, right. we'll have the time to do that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> was the other day? Let me just see. I think that looks Third. good, Margie. Okay. Good. Okay. Anybody have any questions? About the plan forward. <laughs> well, this is it, right? This that is that, that is it. That is it. For the 12 yep. 9 is 12 5. That's right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, unless there's anything else, I think we will move on. We have. Um, appointment of zoning administrator. Um, we have a m number of members of the DRB here. I, excuse me, Planning Commission and actually DRB folks. Um, Margie, we had a number of applicants for the new zoning administrator. My understanding is that the recommendation uh, from the Chris. Planning Commission is, oh, his Chris, um, is for a Mr. Kiernan, correct, David Kiernan from Sunderland. Um, and maybe we should invite Chris as the chair of the Planning Commission to come up. Would you like you to, really, you just, we are right on target here. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> so, talk to us about the candidate that you're recommending. Well, we, we had a, an unusually strong pool of applicants, and uh, we dug right in and did the due diligence, followed up on references, and mm -hmm. interviewed them all around this table. And we felt that Mr. Kiernan, who is a member of the select board in Sunderland and is involved in some other town office in, in mm -hmm. Sunderland, Planning committee. Planning. Planning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, there we great. go. Uh -huh. So great. that, you know, he had direct hands on experience of the material in question and um, his background in law enforcement seemed to indicate through checking of references that he had very good people skills that he could kind of grapple with the vagaries of the public. And um, so we, we thought he was a, a standout candidate. Now, you know, one thing that we're w way too cognizant of is that uh, we've had, uh, this is our fourth zoning administrator in two years. It's not an enviable position. It doesn't talk about continuity. So we're hoping that this time is a charm in that <laughs> regard. Um, I make no predictions. <laughs> Um, does this Kiernan uh, fellow, does he have time for us? You mentioned he's doing he, a couple he, other he's jobs. He's available to start right yes. away. Yes, he said. He can yes. regularly put in the hours that we need him to put in here. Right. Well, he, you know, his position in Sunderland on Planning Commission and Select Board is much like yours, that it's not a job per se, it's something that he does as a public service. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's available during the day to come down here two days a week and, and work with us, starting right away. As I recall, he's, he's retired police officer, correct? Yes. That's correct. So he's, he's, he doesn't have any other full-time job other than what he's doing? Correct. Uh, for At the moment. Okay. And that's, that's what attracted him about the job was the fact that it, it was hours. I mean, there were we can guarantee him at least 16 hours. Mm -hmm. That's right. all at the budget. He, he said that the zoning administrator in Sunderland, I believe, works nine hours a month. 
So he didn't think that was a good job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it all depends how you look at it. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Was there any discussion? He said 16 hours. Is he was happy with the 16 hours? Right. Well, I think that, you know, this being budget season, we, we really need to talk to our last zoning administrator in terms of what he sees as the systemic problems with the program and get a, a better handle on what would be a, a good job description and what would be realistic hours to do this. Uh, we, we emphasized with all the candidates that we felt that Enforcement had been very uneven over the last long period of time, mm -hmm. and that um, this was something that we hope to correct. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, it went to the credibility of, mm -hmm. uh, of zoning, and the Planning Commission can sit around this table and talk all they want, but if there's no arm out there saying, well, this is, this is you, you got to file for a permit, then mm -hmm. it's kind of beside the point. You know, second, I mean, I did talk to Tyler about it being liaison, and he did state that he needed more hours to do the work, in especially the enforcement uh, part of the job, the zoning administrative job. So, I mean, mm -hmm. he said, I think he had 20 hours a week, and he said it wasn't enough. Well, we may be coming back to you on that question. Mm -hmm. How many did he think he needed? He said three. He said three days would be minimum. Twenty-four hours. Twenty-four hours. We're we're only we've only been budgeting sixteen. Yes. But that was cyclical. There would be some weeks that were twenty. Well, 22, you know, we back. don't see that this increasing the hours of the zoning administrator is the only possible solution. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to, to really zero in on what problem we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. And so it might be that administrative support would, would clear up some of the right. things. We understand that the zoning <coughs> files could be a little bit more uh, organized than that the cross-references by property ID numbers, the yada, yada, yada. So that might be every bit as important as enforcement. Mm -hmm. Or Which that might, that you know, getting somebody to work on that might free the zoning administrator up to do enforcement. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How much do we pay the zoning administrator? $17 an hour. And that's, um, we went to a different fee structure because the ZA does not take the permit fees, right? I mean, in the past, wasn't that yeah, the that way? Was, uh, that was to lure some candidates to of right. professional um, capabilities. That was a decision we made last fall was to uh, devote the permit fees directly to an hourly wage. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so I think that partially contributed to why we're getting the caliber of people, at least this time around, that we did. Mm -hmm. I was very I, I, I didn't understand that. Convert the, the fees to an hourly wage? Well, the zoning administrator only used to get, oh my gosh, um, it was $13 an hour or 14 max top. I think it was lower than that. Um, but then would get a fee for every zoning permit they issued but we couldn't attract candidates that would stay at that wage. Mm -hmm. And when I looked around at other towns, we were super low, um, even compared to some neighboring towns. So just by converting the, you know, it's a, it's a administrative sort of policy decision you make, you, you put the, the burden of the entire position on the tax rate instead of having it supplemented by fees. But by the same token, in that budget year, we got qualified candidates. And so this particular budget year, we continued to budget $17 an hour with no fees. And then any of the fees come to the town. The general fund. Correct. Right into the general fund, okay. which is... I mean, I think it basically end, ended yeah. up as a wash in, in terms of the money that, that went out to the 
correct um, zoning administrator. Mm -hmm. But it, I, you know, I, it was, I think you're right. I think that was a way to attract people with with a higher hourly wage. It was a given. In hours, I mean, it's yeah. still yeah, yeah, an issue. It, yeah, the sixteen to twenty or whatever. It's yeah. going to end up sugaring out to be. Yeah. Well, and it will. It'll be important for the for the board for the select board to get your recommendation from the planning commission. I think. Okay. In terms well, of budgetary needs in that position. We have to go back and interview our last zoning administrator. Mm -hmm. We didn't accomplish yes. an exit interview, and yeah. uh, I want to get his recommendations on mm -hmm. systems. Yep, yep, I think that's important. Do you have a question? Yes, Tom. I just have a question. Considering we have four ZAs in the last two years, you mentioned Chris. As uh, well, when we hire this person, oh, we will have four. four. It's four and four. Four years. Four. Right. <laughs> they all last about a year. Uh, has there been any other exit interviews? Have you gathered any information regarding um, job description, the functions they perform, uh, issues they may have had? We have. We, we have conducted those interviews. Um, some were more valuable than others. Um, you know, I, I think what we see is that, uh, you know, what we emphasized in the interviews was that you're not the first zoning administrator for Shaftesbury and you're not going to be the last. So you've got to leave things in an organized fashion <laughs> that makes sense to the next person coming in who doesn't know a whole lot about this. And I think that that kind of sums up partly where we are, is that the record keeping has been very uneven and that, uh, you know, that there are long-term issues that continue to fester within the town uh, around zoning. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, not too many, but, um, you know, being able to document where we are year by year on these things is such an important piece. Yeah. And that was actually one of the strengths of this candidate. You know, is uh, that if anything, it's more documentation than we're even used to at the law. Hmm. That's at the that's rural, good. Vermont rural community level. Tom, my, my, I guess where I'm really driving the question is to, when you have an exit interview, from my experience, when you have an exit interview with several exit interviews, one usually uses that data, that information to gain root cause analysis as to why this issue prevails, why are we having this turnover? <clears throat> and I'm just wondering, has, have, has the planning commission or the selector done that type of analysis to then hone in on the major issues as to why we're having this turnover? Well, I okay. think Chris has already hit the nail on the head. Right. I, I don't think right. the issue is around turnover, Tom. I think the issue is around, you know, accomplishing the, the many facets that are required for the job. And, you know, our last zoning administrator left because he's an architect and architecture picked up and mm -hmm. that's his first love. And I knew what, the day we hired him that as soon as architecture picked up, he'd be gone. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not a bit surprised. It happened exactly as I, I imagined. You know, some of the other ZA uh, people who were even more short term had grown up in the area, returned had to get some sort of employment, took a job with Town of Shaftesbury, ZA, they had legal background, and within six months, they had much better offers. Mm -hmm. and I think off that's, that's my point. Okay. That, that, I think that's what we're driving. You, you, I'm hearing so far, uh, the current zoning administrator, uh, soon to be former, uh, uh, his, God, and God bless him, his, his <clears throat> business picked up, and therefore he's earning a what? bigger paycheck. Zoning administrator prior to that, or maybe one even before that, uh, I, I thought I heard you say, same issue occurred. They're earning more money somewhere else. So I'm looking at a root cause, just from the information you're giving me, is possibly why we have zoning administrator turnovers is, 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 is a, a budgetary issue. And that's why I, I think, I think, that's I think we're at a level now right. where we're more competitive, Tom. Right. Now I think we have to deal with the, um, the fact that uh, 
we have to figure out if it's the 20 hours a week or the 24, and is it the more administrative support that we need? Um, you know, I, what I remember a year ago or two years ago when we were looking at the budget on this, one of the issues was that we actually, there was so little building going on in town, we didn't have many permits requests. Um, so we actually had a situation where, you know, we didn't need a ton of hours because people just weren't coming in. Um, and hopefully things are beginning to pick up and, and that activity will increase. Bill? Uh, I just want to comment that one of the major differences between the former candidates and this candidate is that he is looking for a part-time job. The others are looking for full-time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a yeah. difference. Yeah. Well, um, oh, I'm sorry, Jay. I don't should be asking this question, but are all the computer programs we're talking about, will that alleviate some of its work, or does that not apply to the industrial you could use the CAI, the listers database, maybe to help facilitate some of the organization of the yeah. mm -hmm. zoning administrator's yeah, yeah. tasks yeah. and updates yeah. and so forth, I would think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's coming online soon. Mm -hmm. Soon. Soon. It's a good question. Yeah. Really most of the computer work in that position is is email, is communication with the public, with interested parties, with applicants, with board members with other boards mm -hmm. so uh, you know that's a skill in itself the email has no nuance or inflection so that to be able to stay out of trouble on email there's a lot to know about that well, i thought perhaps along the lines of the filing applications and so forth would that be something that lends itself to mm -hmm. well the public files the applications i'm not sure where the public is on computer skills May I, may I ask, I mean, mm -hmm. tonight we're really, I mean, this is a very, yeah. very substantive issue and a very right. important issue, but tonight we're really just supposed to vote on whether or not this is the candidate that we would approve. So, as opposed to digressing too much, might I suggest we kind of pull it back and get to that point? I think that's fine. If, if everyone feels as though they've had, I mean, we do have, a, you know, several new board members. I think actually it's a really good discussion for them to, to have heard. Um, and I appreciate it. Um, you know, it would have been nice for the board to have had an opportunity to meet him. Unfortunately, he had a conflict, as I understand it, and couldn't yes. be here. And in the interests of our, the town, not having a ZA <laughs> right now, and he's come so highly recommended, um, and the fact that he's ready to start tomorrow. This week. Um, yeah. I would suggest that, um, that we do move to appoint Mr. Kiernan as the ZA. Um, do you have a recommendation in terms of the appointment period? I think it's described in the job description, if I remember correctly, as being three years. Three years. Is that correct? Martin? That's what I see in the statute as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so then I would ask for a motion to appoint David Kiernan as our. Uh, Zoning administrator for a term of three years. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions? Tim. Um, we're talking about, we're, we're the hiring authority here, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would never hire anybody I haven't met. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand that. Yeah, I understand. I understand that. Do you want to do, can you do a special meeting to move this along because? Yeah, I can. I mean, if I'm the only one that has a problem, I'm happy to meet with the guy personally, but I'm not comfortable voting for him without having met him. Let me ask a question. Chris, how much, how much time did you spend meeting, speaking with him? Well, I think it's fair to say the interviews ran 45 minutes to an hour per candidate, so we we really kicked and it around pretty and thoroughly. And reference checks. And reference checks, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, Marky was a part of the interview process, uh, and four of the five planning commissioners were present. And what four was, of the five. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
what, what, what made him stand out more so than the other two candidates? Um, well, a variety of things, Carl. Um, the understanding of how local government works was, was large. And um, the other candidates had some degree of that. Um, the, you know, this guy seemed to understand what the job was from his work in Sunderland and that it didn't involve interpreting the zoning bylaws, it involved enforcing them as they are written. Uh, that's an important distinction and not everybody understands that. Uh, he seemed like, the, you know, on the reference check side, people uh, validated that he had good skills with people. It seems hugely important in this job. You're dealing with the public, people walking in off the street. Um, he had decent computer skills. Um, he understood that, you know, because of his role again in town government, that the thing had to pay for itself at some level, that his fees had to somehow equal his salary. You know, maybe not dollar for dollar, but pretty close. Um, so, um, and the fact that he could start right away. And what was, what was the, <coughs> the most, the least desirable element of, of, of his credentials? Uh, again, not nothing personal about him, but just his professional background or anything? I think uh, maybe he had a deficit in being able to listen. Um, you know, uh, we noted this with two candidates, two out of three candidates that they were yattering on about what they were doing in Sunderland and what they did when they were on the police force in Ridgewood, New Jersey, and their camp up in Sandgate, and yaddy, 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 yaddy. And I was like, are these guys here? Are they talking to us? <laughs> well, but see, to me, that is very important because if you can't listen, right away, you're starting at a deficit. Chris, I've uh, <clears throat> heard rumors that um, zoning administrators get yelled at a lot for whatever reason. Uh, they uh, uh, people can't build their permit when you know take, get their permit when they want it or build without a permit when they want it. Um, did you get the impression that this guy had a thick enough skin to deal with that sort of thing? You thought his background in law enforcement in Ridgewood, New Jersey mm -hmm. might be helpful oh, that I did. way. Of, of all the candidates, <laughs> this was the person that I thought was most suited to enforcement and being able to deal with difficult parties. Mm -hmm. Margie, you've met with the guy? Yeah. Okay. And I've talked with him several times. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if the rest of the board is uh, of the opinion that getting a zoning administrator uh, right away is more important than what is normal procedure, which is, of course, anytime you hire somebody, you meet Me. with them mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. Uh, I'm willing to go along. You know, I think it would be nice if he could, if if he could come down and meet the board, maybe the second meeting this month. Mondays are never good for him. That's Monday. There. Oh. oh. Select board. Oh, okay. He's right. meeting up. You know, okay. He, he's yeah, going to other he's, meetings. He's on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I understand that. Um, all right. I'm going to call but the question. Also, oh, okay. Well, that might also. Let me ask one more question. Can mm -hmm. we uh, fire him at our pleasure? Yes. This is at will employment. I employment he at will. He's supervised by the planning commission. They are his immediate okay. supervisor. And we typically hold a six month, we hold like we, an orientation. <coughs> I'll come down and spend a morning or something with him just at the beginning, get um, a report from our previous zoning administrator about overhanging issues, six month review, one year review. So we try and really do this systematically. We take the responsibility seriously. Okay. And certainly the select board always has the opportunity to go to a planning commission meeting or a development review meeting and see our new ZA in action. So 
All right, I am going to call the question. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of appointing, um, hiring Mr. David Kiernan as our new zoning administrator? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's a unanimous decision, Sean. Well, thank you very much. Boy, that's, it's really good news. Really good news. That's what yes. it sticks. Yes. That's, that's yes. my hope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me too. Me too. And thanks for, really, for all your work with the interview process, all of you. Um, okay. Because well, that's a lot of work. We'll be coming to you with planning issues in the not too distant future. Well, great. And, <laughs> you know, budget, anything budget impact, we're well, well, we, starting. We, we need to study a little bit further in okay. terms of what we want to recommend there. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah, Thank we you for hearing us out. So great. Thank you Thanks. so Thanks, much. Chris. Thanks, Bill. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is our um, the sheriff's contract. And Chad, thank you very much for coming. I asked Chad if he would be available to the board as we review this. Um, again, for the uh, benefit of the audience, um, we our current contract with the sheriff's department runs through November 30th. Um, and we do have money in the budget. Um, the select board was aware that this was going to happen. Um, and the current budget would allow us uh, to stay within budget um, by decreasing. We would have to decrease our hours, which are now 20 hours a week, down to 16 hours a week in order to, for the re remainder of the uh, fiscal year until June 30th to stay within the budget. Um, if we went, um, if we maintained the 20 hours a week, um, that would put us about $2,650 over budget. Um, Tim actually had a, a a thought today, which was that if we, um, and I don't have the full numbers, but I think it was a little over $600 if we went from December 1st to January 15th, thinking that that's the holiday, really the holiday season, um, and maintain 20 hours during that period. Um, then I think that was going to put us over, bu and, but then reverted back to the 16 hours. That would put us over budget by a little over $600. I think. Is that right, Tim? Yeah, I mean, uh, the 16 hours versus 20 hours is four hours. He's, uh, sheriff is essentially $25 an hour, so it's $100 a week. Yep. Uh, I offered up those numbers. I really think the right answer is to maintain 20 hours a week of patrols. I don't think, and, and uh, I don't hear a cry in, this, the, in the community for less law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we ha we can, we've got $2,600 we can spend, right? Well, it would, not in that line item. But we, we can would, move we it would from have to, We would there. have to overspend that line item. So, you know, I mean, we're, we don't know how the budget's going to shake out at the end of the year. Um, it's pretty... Well, we know we've been trying to spend we, down we the, know the excess gonna, for the last two years. We know we will years. have a surplus. Yeah. yeah. Now, I say we know that. We don't know what the winter's going to be. But, but $600 <coughs> is not a lot of money out of a $1.7 million budget, I don't think. Well, I, I would agree with you in terms of the, um, the expectations from the community, frankly. Um, you $2, know, we $2,600 have 20, could be one breaking. We have 20 Four hours. We, we now have a 25 mile speed limit out here. And one of the things that we talked about was that we didn't, we didn't want people, we didn't want to get a lot of revenue out of that. That that's a strictly was a safety issue on that corner. Um, for children and residents, you know this very well. And, um, we committed to um, educating the public about that. 
And one of the ways to do that is with stops that's not you know, presenting them with whatever, <laughs> whatever a ticket is for that amount, um, but to really give warnings initially. Mm -hmm. um, it won't last forever, folks, but this is a way to um, kind of increase the sheriff's presence there to alert the community. Yeah, we've um, also and put on we, our speed card. I was just going to say, that speed sign, you know, I was behind it the other night, and as soon as people see that, I see the headlight, you know, the, the rear lights go on. Um, the brake lights. So, so I, you know, I would open it up to other board members for questions for Chad, um, thoughts about maintaining the 20 hours through the end of the fiscal year, increasing, decreasing. I have a, I have a question, but not necessarily about the 20 hours. So, whenever. People are done with that issue. So we're, Mitch? We are talking the end of the fiscal year from now until June 30th? June 30th. Okay. Yeah. Um, something else I didn't see in here. I, I see on the uh, 18, the, Depar the Department reserves the right to modify or terminate this contract if federal funds are reallocated. Uh, that, that has to be taken out. Okay. That was from the old. This was just a working copy that I emailed to, to oh, Karen. Okay. I, mean, I was, was going to say, no, it's good for the goose, is good for the gander. I mean, no, we, no, should that's, a, we should have a way out also. Yeah, no, that, I think, that, should, I that think was, it should be there anyway. That was required under um, Cops, the COPS, COPS grant, grant, which was federally subsidized. Mm -hmm. um, so by entering into the agreement, I had to, if, if you got rid of your contract, I was going to have to pay back the money to the feds. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why that was in there to protect protect us but that line item can be deleted now that those funds are, are no longer uh, usable so and we assume there aren't going to be any more <coughs> uh, every every grants. time they uh, put out a solicitation and, and give us the ability to apply we do mm -hmm. um, yeah. they haven't had one um, in a while I don't know, <coughs> you know given the given the nonsense that's going on in Washington who knows when they're gonna when they're gonna do that I don't again. necessarily have a problem with the uh, Reserve Irving to write with a 30-day notice for anything for you or for the town. Actually, I mean, I think that's a good. Yeah. I think that's a good contract, part of any contract. So I would almost leave it in there. Maybe word it. Just say both parties have a, a right to. Uh, yeah, I have modify or terminate the I have contract a, with a 30-day notice. Period. I have a, a template that has that language already in it. I think it was just modified on your current contract because of the mm -hmm. COPS grant, that's all. One, one of the things that I, I, I've noticed um, various times is not in contracts that come across the select board. There's, no, there's nobody identified as the point of contact. There's, there's the town. And, yeah, that's, and, it's, and, it's different with every, um, with every town, usually they may appoint one person on the select board to be the liaison. In your case, it's always been it's always been Margie or uh, you know her predecessor. Um, and I think that should be in the agreement. We can do that if that's what the board's pleasure. Is. Well, I, I think it's vital that you have a point of contact as opposed to a board. So you want it more formal in in that in the language. I would, if you consider that more formal. Yeah, I, I consider that more specific. And you would want that to be Margie, or or do you want that to it's be not the up to me town personally. administrator? I have no problem with it being Margie, but I don't know about the board. Well, they got me. They got me listed as liaison. But. I, I I don't care. I just think that there needs to be right. I think it, I, I think it probably should be the town administrator yeah. in terms of she's During the one operational that would be hours, heading, yeah, getting yeah. calls from residents, right. and then perhaps transferring it to Chad. Yeah, to I alert him. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that when you get a call, you don't react to somebody that mm -hmm. is just calling. Mm -hmm. um, what I noticed and that I was always familiar with in prior situations was that we had a contract that would specify the number of days a week that we expected coverage. Um, so I didn't see that in here. I don't know. This is there is very little change between this contract and prior year's contract. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how do you schedule shifts? Is it, is there a minimal number of hours? Or we, we try to we try to keep it around a four hour block, but sometimes it's less. 
okay. um, because you only have 20 hours we wouldn't typically do more than than a four hour uh, but what you may see is you know two hours in the morning and then two hours later in the afternoon or you know in the evening yeah. we try yeah. to keep it random that's what i noticed um in target based on your feedback and if we hear concerns from citizens who do call us and say hey people are you know doing this on my road then we'll try to um we'll, we'll try to schedule I, i'm usually scheduled out a month because my yeah my folks need to know when and where they're when and where they're working um but you know that does change uh, on a daily basis of you know where we pull them based on where they're needed so right. but we're very open to you know if you tell me you want to use all your hours on saturdays and sundays and then that's what we'll do Whatever. so you can be as hands-on with it or you know leave it up to <coughs> us I, I want to throw a little wrench in the works here um with regards to the contact and it also is kind of going through my mind you're very well aware chad having been here before about our consideration of constables mm -hmm. etc mm -hmm. whether or not they'd have um um, full full um, authority or just civil authority. I'm just wondering out loud, uh, even though having Margie identified as the point of contact, if we choose to have a constable who would have only civil authority, limit their authority to that, would we want that person also to be able to contact the, the sheriffs uh, if there is a reason? Because whatever they were doing may have run into problems as opposed to that constable having to contact Margie, who would then have to contact the sheriff. I think Chad or is that said too that far down the road. You just said that citizens can call you and say there's right. trouble in my yard and you'll respond. I, right. I, I, I certainly believe you would respond if the constable said I've Absolutely. got trouble over here. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we typically, I mean, the, the, the point of contact is for, it, it's one person to to be the liaison between the department, but it, it doesn't necessarily only have to be one person calling me. Um, but we try to use that for consistency so that, you know, like in, in our case, Margie and I know what we're working on. We know the emails and, and how, you know, how we're dealing with issues. Um, but it doesn't prevent anyone else from calling me at any time to say, you know, okay, can you pay a little more attention here? Um, and unless unless Margie would tell me, we don't want you over there, we want you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's if there's a conflicting, you know, somebody wants something over here. And, I'm and thinking Margie is being the administrative contact as opposed to gotcha. the yeah. people that you're serving. Yeah, no, I hear you, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everyone is welcome to, to call and- Everyone's and expected to call. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's what we want, so. How do you charge with those radar machines? You, I don't know what they call them. Rate, how, what do you mean? How do I charge? Uh, does that come out of our 20 hours a week? No, or? no, that's a freebie. That's yeah, a freebie. It's I, bought. I, it's bought and paid for. So I want to thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, that's really terrific. You're welcome. Terrific. No, you're welcome. Yeah. The one on the north end wasn't working only part time over the weekend. The one up here. That, the one down by the dailies. Yeah. That's got to be uh, maybe the state police or. Oh, there, I don't know. There I was, only there was the one, one, one down there. One on, down by my house. No, this one. This one down here is mine. Down here okay, because the one on the other end, yeah, I went by one time it worked, and the next time I went by it didn't work. Really? Yeah, well, they run on they run on solar panels, so depending on how well the batteries charge, um, sometimes if if you had a real cloudy day, yeah. it may not work. But all they time. do work because you sit there, yeah, you sit work. in my yard, and you see them. Oh yeah, they slow down. They slow down. Should stop by about two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the pleasure of the board in terms of um, the contract hours? I would move that we renew the contract at 20 hours a week, just like we've had it. Through 630-14 with the language to uh, the department or the town reserve the rights to modify or terminate this contract for any reason deemed appropriate. And also to add the point of contact being point of contact. Point of contact. Martin, 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 Martin. Martin Becker, town administrator. Wait, the contract period is from now through next November 30th. No. 630. 630. Oh, you're only doing a six fiscal. months. You're only going to do a six well, months. Well, it'll bring us to the end of the fiscal, fiscal year, Mark. Keep it on oh, I would agree. Calendar. I would yeah. agree. It makes it simple. I always wondered why we were where we were. Right. Well, <laughs> I think that was the, the comps grant. The, yeah, the, the federal government's oh, fiscal year. Oh, okay. Different. So all their allocations are usually October ish, right. somewhere in there. That's what it was. And what is the financial impact again, Tim, for the 20 hours a week through the end of the year? $2,600. $2,600. $2,650. $2,650. Yeah. over budget. 
Have we had the problem where we would need the extra time? Pardon? Have we had a problem where we would need the extra hours? These aren't extra hours. Well, no, but I mean, continue. The, well, ha have to we... spend the extra money, put it that way. I have had problems. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I would say we've, you know, we had a couple of incidents down on Cleveland Avenue last week. Um, okay. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean, it, you know. Yeah. It, and again, we have, you know, we have a new speed zone in town. Right, there. but I mean, I'm just wondering if we have had enough. Criminal activity? Yeah, that, that it would. Warrant the, hey, warrant the extra continuation of right uh, to keep the hours the same as they are. Well, we've had we've had record number of break-ins last year. Of, 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 I mean, it was like I forgot was when I did the calculation over two hundred percent more. I, I, I forget what it was. I, I hadn't heard that. Correctly. Yeah, I mean, we've yeah, gone into a calculation based on the information from the police. We're we talking. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about taking what I think are extraordinary measures to bring more law enforcement to bear in the town with the, with the constables. So uh, I don't see any reason we would want to cut back on law enforcement in the short term. Well, I w that wasn't my point. My point was just I, I had, didn't know what Carl said. Mm -hmm. I had to uh, miss that. I'm pretty sure it was 18 break-ins last year. And based on the statistics, I think the year before and the year before that we hadn't had more than... I know, five, seven, nine, something like that. Okay. Well, and it's certainly all around the county. I it mean, is. I mean, th this is part and parcel yeah. of the, the drug problem in yeah. the community, and that's yeah, why right. we've been really yep. hammering on uh, the Operation County Strikes and, mm -hmm. and you know, trying to, to deal with that aspect of it. But there, are, there isn't any community here that hasn't been touched by mm -hmm. uh, increased burglaries. Uh, even Bennington, uh, who has a 24-hour police department, mm -hmm. uh, is seeing an increased number. So... Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're combating it from both ends, but certainly the presence doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, I'm sorry, Tom? Mm -hmm. And I know Tim mentioned it about increased police presence. He's getting the feel that the community would like to see more of that. Is that what I thought I heard you say? I certainly don't get the impression that they want to see less. Right, and, and does the rest of the board concur with that conclusion? That's what we're about to vote on. <laughs> well, in a very roundabout way, I'm asking a more direct question. Does the board conclude, you know, concur with that conclusion of Tim's, that they, you know, more police presence is? Yes. Because you, obviously you're going to vote, and you're actually voting to overspend the budget item. Right. So I just, I just want clarification. I just want to understand. Well, yeah. As Carl was I, just I, saying, I, we've seen record burglaries lately, so. No, no, I, I, I hear you loud and clear, Tim. I see Mitch. But I'm just wondering, is that as the board as a whole, is that what you're saying? I think that's a perception. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a perception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perception or a fact? I, I, have not, I have not canvassed everyone in town, so I can't no, say I it's a fact. <laughs> uh, it's my perception that the town would prefer to have a larger, <clears throat> the, maintain at least the level of police presence that we've had historically <clears throat> in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. That's my perception. That's what the rest of the board is going to do. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's vote the question. We have a motion. Did we have a second? Still waiting on a second. So second. we have a second. Ken seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. <clears throat> Chad, thank you very much. Okay. Um, and I'll get this. With the I'll revamp it. Those, Do you want me to email it changes. to you or Margie? <clears throat> Why don't you email me? it to Margie? Okay. Right. Yeah. I'll that, that tomorrow. Great. Thank right. you very thank much. Thank you very much. And if, just procedural here. You'll, you'll email it to Margie and then we'll meet next time and sign it because we got until the end of the That's month, right? right? November 18, no. we can uh, sign. Only well, unless, oh. unless you just Karen's want to authorize me to sign it. Okay, go ahead. I'm all set. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see. We, Mitch has asked, there were a couple of small edits, I think, cleaning up on the appointment policy. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'd rather get it. Small little things, I'd you want to get, get it, it right. Yeah, you know, okay. syntactically correct and before I do the final reading. Sure. All right, so uh, we will, um, we'll hold that to the next, our next meeting in November, Margie. Mm-hmm. For the, for the third reading. Um, town Garage Project Status Report. 
Um, the committee will meet this Wednesday. Um, there have been some members of the committee that have been at the um, transfer station on Saturdays. Um, we had one member, Rick Kobick, who made a presentation at a, a community dinner in North Shaftesbury. Um, we'll have a couple of members that will go to the firehouse this week um, to their meeting. Um, as we had talked before, the committee has been trying to uh, make its presence known so that people will feel comfortable in smaller groupings to come up and ask questions. Uh, I've had some, you know, really good response when I've been up at the transfer station. Um, and, you know, we're just keeping our fingers crossed that people will get involved. If they have concerns or issues, they will raise them. Um, there will be more, there'll be a letter to the editor from the committee. Um, there'll probably be one more commentary prior to the vote. Um, there was, um, I know that there was a, a question raised in a, a banner article recently, um, letter to the editor, that the committee had um, discussed somewhat um, and I will say discussed via email, um, several committee members. Um, and it really, that, that citizen's question had to do with the location of the facility, um, the planned location. And it, it, it was a, a, an issue that had been raised previously. The past facilities committee, the select board, um, had made numerous overtures to um, the adjacent property owner to Cole Hall. Um, as it turned out, in our attempts to negotiate, um, basically the landowner walked away from negotiations. Um, so that property was not able to even be acquired if it would have even been suitable um, for, the, for the project. Um, so anyway, there were a number of things that were raised in the letter that really were, um, had already been um, evaluated, analyzed um, over a long period of time. And, you know, I think it's really important when people have questions, um, frankly, to uh, call any of the committee members, call any of the select board members, um, we have come to the meetings. We have, you know, piles, frankly, of uh, paperwork that has gone out to community members. It has been, you know, every one of these town reports over the last three years have had extensive information about the location of the uh, projected facility. Um, and, you know, sometimes it just, you can put out as much information as you can possibly put out there. And, uh, you know, we're just hoping that people will, again, access it, shaftsbury.org. There's lots of information about the town garage project on there. Um, and, you know, this, is a, this committee has worked very hard to whittle down the numbers um, and the impact on the taxpayers. So. Uh, we hope that people will come out on the 3rd um, and support it. Um, and please get your questions to us um, because there's lots of people who would like to, like to, you know, give the answers as they know them. So, Ken, is there anything else that you want to add at this point? Nope. Okay. Okay. I would just add that um, the, the garage committee is made up, I believe, mostly of people who concerned about the garage issue uh, voted against it the first time around. Mm -hmm. And on the garage committee, we now have a consensus for a path forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. And while we're getting um, some, some, we're getting some negative feedback, I think what we're, we're mostly getting positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, what we need is for people to get their answers, qu their, their questions answered to get comfortable as the committee has in months and months of negotiation, and Ken will tell you, we started out, you know, on different sides, and mm -hmm. we're 
-hmm. now on the same side, but uh, <coughs> uh, we really <coughs> want people to turn out and vote uh, for the for the garage so we can move forward on this issue mm -hmm. and and get this done. It's something the town needs, and uh, we have uh, we we worked hard to get it to a budget that we we believe the town will accept. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim. Um, okay, we have um, an errors and omission request from the listers. Again, these are requests that um, the listers um, bring to the board if the change is made after the grand list is filed with the state, and in, that is the case um, in this incident. Uh, this is parcel number 030164, property of Douglas Green, um, 1130 Old Depot Road in Shaftesbury. Um, they're requesting a change from the current grand list of $169,600 to $163,200. And the reason for the change is that the land area, Mr. Green had questioned the land area, which was on the 2013 grand list, um, showing four, plus, uh, four my, or, well, it's not plus or minus, they say four minus acres. Um, the tax map indicates the parcel contains 2.6 acres. In order to determine what the correct acreage is, Mr. Green provided us with calculations from a surveyor showing that the correct acreage should be 3.15 acres. Therefore, we are filing the errors and omission to correct the difference. The cost to the town um, is minimal. It uh, represents $20.99. So I would ask for a motion to approve the change in the grand list value. Uh, Ken. Second. Um, Carl seconded. Any questions? I had a question, just a sure. general question on these uh, yeah. surveyors. When they're doing that, uh, when the listers are putting together that automated system, they see the overlaps where someone says they have three acres and or four acres and someone who has more, that's all coming to light during this process, isn't it? The the boundary overlaps and so forth. I, I would hope so. So when we get I this new system so. in here, mm -hmm. this should say 3.15 acres, not four minus. So I, I, that's, I, what we're, that's the intent I would, anyway. I would hope so, and I think that's a question to ask when they come in in December. Okay. I think that's the no. intent. I think yeah. they do notice that yeah. when they put the coordinates in the system. Yeah. It'll come up and tell you where there's overlap. And so I, I hope so, too, yeah. But but mm -hmm. it is a good question. Remember that in December when you sit with Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Karen, I need you to okay. sign these two, both I and Green. Okay. Um... All right, we have then the Vermont State Police Community Advisory Board. Um, they are trying to resurrect this. Um, this is a, uh, uh, this is from Lieutenant Treya. They are attempting to reestablish an advisory board that will be productive, sustainable, and representative of our communities. Um, and the purpose for a community advisory board is to allow citizens to participate in an open forum and be directly involved with the decision-making process regarding public safety in their community. Their input will be considered when establishing station goals and law enforcement related initiatives. Um, advisory boards must be as representative as possible of the community served he recommends to select boards that they consider their local elected officials, business people, community watch group members, senior citizens, cultural communities, 
um, and he goes on, fraternal organizations, teenage leaders, and any other citizens that the select board and he feel have a vested interest in the area. Um, selection of CAB members should be carried out by the town select board. Um, and the committee member should act as a liaison between the Vermont State Police, the select board, and the residents of the community. They will have a two-year term and will continue to serve at the discretion of the member and the station commander. Meetings will be held at least biannually. Um, they should have a genuine interest in working on the advisory board. Um, so, you know, I don't know if there is there a select board member interested. Carl, I think you had expressed some interest. I have expressed some interest, yes. Okay. Unless uh, there's somebody else that would like, but I, I think the board should have somebody represented on it. I, I agree. I would agree with that. Do we have any uh, Eagle Scouts in, or potential Eagle Scouts or anything in the area that might be able to sit, you know, 16 before they graduate if they're working toward their Eagle Scout status? I mean, they're looking for students, everything else, they're looking for everything. Right, right, right. Now, Margie, I don't, I couldn't tell from this, are they looking for one member from each community? One representative? Well, that's all we've ever appointed. I know, point. I'm just wondering. So I, you know, if we have. I don't have a definitive understanding. If you'd like me to follow up. I mean, it's a lot of work to go out there and, and canvas the whole community to find out. It says reestablishing representative members. Right, but this is this is the whole geographic area. So I, I don't, you know. If he does want to broaden the pool, I think this ought to go in the paper. Mm -hmm. ought to just look at. I thought. I, did you see it in the paper? I think I did see something. Yeah, I think I might have actually. I don't know if it was in the paper or. How long ago, man? Uh, maybe I don't know. I'm. I, I've, I don't know. Maybe I probably was reading something else. But I did, community advisory boards are, maybe I was reading some other statutes, but they are, I've, uh, I've, they, they use them, they want to promote them. It's also looking as though the final decision for appointment will be made by the station commander. So are we actually just putting forth nominations? No recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds like it. <laughs> So yeah. in the past, we had Craig Bruder was serving. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that it was ever, it active I don't think it ever, and then it, ever it, went it, anywhere. It I might have met one meeting. search at Craig. right, and then, mm -hmm. it, and then, then it, I think it died. It I died. think it just died. Yeah. Yeah, and and to his credit, he's trying to get it back up again. And Are these community boards open to the public? Are they open meetings? I mean, we have a representative, but the, can, that, does that prevent anyone else from going? Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't I, know. I, I better get Maybe we need, maybe we need no, a little right. bit I mean, more I, information I from speaking, the lieutenant. I wasn't sure until we started talking about what, what it was. Do we want to ask him to come to a board meeting? Do you think it really merits that, though? I mean, it's just an yeah. email, maybe. I'm just, I think I'm just Paul's asking willing Mitch to do it, I'm willing if, to nominate I'm, I'm yeah. just suggesting to Ken that he's actually our liaison with, yeah. with the state police. I mean, so I, I would, want to jump I would in be these. willing to be interested in it. Okay. So we can either we can either do that tonight, or we can put a call out to the community and see if there's anybody that's interested. Um, I think we can do both. The board. Pardon? I think we can do both. It sounded like from the description you read that they're open to community members as well. And mm -hmm. I think we show that uh, we want to, you know, maintain that partnership by putting a select board member mm -hmm. on the committee. So yeah, we have a liaison from yeah. who's mm -hmm. supposed to liaise with them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I nominate. I move that we nominate uh, Ken to, to do that job. I second that. With with the initial outreach to the community to see if yeah, we get more right. I think I think that would yep. be great to put something in the paper to yep. yeah. All right. Um, all those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We're all set. All right, Ken. So maybe you want to give Reg a call yep. and find out what it's all about and report back to us. Yep. All right, great. Um, town Administrator's Report. 
Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that. It was uh, your highway crew is finishing the cider mill project, capital improvement project. You need to get the drainage ditch in. Uh, we're finishing up, obviously, um, the tail end of these projects, including West Mountain. We have some tree work we need to do. Uh, we're going to be cleaning drainage inlets uh, over on White Creek Road next week. So the public should take note that we will have a partial closure of White Creek Road next Tuesday and Wednesday, which I believe is the 11th, 12th, or 12th, 13th. It's going to be, it'll be in the paper. Uh, and that's a prelude to the spring paving job that has been, will be covered by grant funds that we already have procured. Uh, Ken and then uh, Terry have verified that we have a very large culvert replacement project ahead that we're going to need to have grant funds for. Uh, it's out on Shaftesbury Hollow Road. So that is, this is new information. We're evaluating that. Uh, we're going to need to do a hydrology, hydrogeological study, um, hydraulic study, not hydrogeo. Uh, VTRANS will do the, the estimate and the model the flow of water uh, and the effect of the 100-year storm or the 500-year storm as they see fit. Um, and they, for free, will come back and recommend the culvert opening and the type of construction elements that we should look at. And then we go from there to gather some estimates from various contractors in order to put that into our budget for fiscal year 15. Uh, hey, Ken, you've been looking at this? Yeah. Do you it's, a know? it's a big one. It's a big one. Is well, big 10,000, is 100,000, what are we talking oh, about? Oh, well, I really It'll didn't take it out. Where, where, where are we talking in the hollow? Right by Hollow Hideaway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, that culvert is probably 15 feet wide and 10 feet high, at least. And that's my measurement. That's not putting tape on it. Is it? Is but it? it's it's what they call a multi-plate culvert. It's all bolted together. Is there a bridge over this? That, mm -mm. It's that, that is the bridge. That's the culvert is the bridge. bridge. Is there holes in it or something? On? Yeah, it's the bottom is wrapped, but okay. wrapped down about a foot. I mean, I didn't get out in there because I had a citizen tell me about it. But it's, it was, it goes like this, then it drops like a foot. So either it's rusted out or whatever. Just disintegrated. It's, yeah. it's going. And it's going to be a big job because you're going to have, it's a dead end road in there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to make, maintain traffic. So. And we're going to, so yeah, we're going to need an easement. Thousands. Well, not hundreds, but you're talking five figures anyway, probably. Mm -hmm. Tens of thousands. Okay. Wow. It's a, it's a big pipe. Uh, the foreman uh, and I met recently. Karen was at the meeting. Uh, and the issue that Craig Bruder was going to bring to the table before he left, but he just did not have time, uh, was we have a property uh, served by a Class 3 road. But Peckham has, Daly's has bought up the property. And uh, the foreman is recommending that the select board consider discontinuing Donald Green Road right off of Airport Road. That has become a private driveway, always was. I mean, it was a, a class three road that went to one dwelling. Mm -hmm. um, that's so he, it's either a highway discontinuance or, or a reclassification of that public right of way that you um, is on the table for discussion if we put it on the agenda that was I'm just reporting that that's a matter of business that will be so, coming your way so right now the town maintains it mm -hmm. and it's a it's private 0.08 miles eight miles very 0 0.08. 0 0.08 very very <coughs> short distance <coughs> and it goes straight up to the home and now Peckham owns like all a long land. drive mm -hmm. So that, that will be on the agenda for the 18th. I think we'd agree that we would yeah. try to squeeze it So it was it a residence, but it's not anymore? Is that it's a I mean? rental right now. Someone's there. It is a residence. Daly owns it, and they're renting the okay. home. But there's certain 
uh, requirements, notice requirements, if the board decides that this would be a discontinuance? Uh, Margie, are you sure that's only eight tenths of, or point oh eight? Yes, we'd have to go measure, but that's what's on the highway map. Well, what I'm getting at is that at one time, I think that's why it's a town road all the way over to Sim Dean Road. And if that other part wasn't discontinued, we're not right by saying eight tenths. Or point eight. Well, it ends as a class three. I don't see it. there's nothing that just that. Right, but I'm just saying go back, it, go it back in the paperwork. Being researched. That's yeah. what will happen. Right. Mm -hmm. If more facts have to be brought out, this is was an idea and a recommendation. Right, but I mean originally that's why that was a town road because it went all the way down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, so I mean I'm just. You know, just so we we'll, yeah. just so we check it. Oh yeah. So emergency services already spoke to about the need to budget for the generator. We're gonna have another, or whatever we're gonna do with as a cooperative agreement. Right. Um, I'm still waiting to get the actual grant agreement for our supplemental funding for the sidewalk project <laughs> that has been in contract administration and VTrans, and hopefully that's gonna get out of gridlock very soon. We still need a recording clerk for the DRB and the Planning Commission meetings. If anybody is interested in that, uh, please see me. And I will be having to advertise again. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from David Sickle on just a confirmation of your motion the other night. And then we're going to jump right into employee um, at least one sit-down meeting with employees, and I'd like to get families yeah. involved. We've got a little breathing room. Is that? Is that? Yeah. That yes, we for, do. For three now. months. Now, yep. Uh, Mert Snow is proceeding to tax sale. Say that again. Our delinquent tax collector, Merton Snow, is proceeding to tax sale, and you'll hear okay. more about that um, from him. Uh, one of the big preliminary budget issues for me is trying to get a handle of what we need to do with this building cosmetically um, to protect the shell and any major system in the building. And I've got a, a big repair and maintenance list. It's a bucket list and it's from notes from various conversations with people. And I think what I'm gonna recommend is that we pull the facilities committee together Mm -hmm. um, to go down that. We have money in the budget, but it should be prioritized and spent between now and June 30th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been looking around all tonight <laughs> wondering what, you know, how far are we going to get with what we've budgeted? And so I need more expertise than I have. Um, we're looking at just a few office management issues replacing the copier scanner that's going on we need to upgrade our phone system um, so we're trying to move ahead on that and it may all tie in with internet phone packages uh, just starting on that issue the solid waste uh, issue still continues I'm getting bids from not only clean harbors but I've got another company NPRO uh, that could bid on the collection of the used oil. The, I think that my feeling is we can get rid of the PCB laced oil for about $3,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another, uh, I have another lead on a potential used oil recycler and that's the missing piece and how we could potentially continue to offer a used oil collection service at the transfer station was what to do with that or how to supervise collection you know, the big issue. that's that's the big piece it's the is, manpower is, is and oversight issue I actually had a couple of people come up to me at the transfer station last weekend saying have you thought about using waste oil to heat the new town garage and we so. did that came up in design yeah. discussions we don't generate enough we did that's yeah it's could I don't know if it can be supplemental, but it, that's yeah. for the yeah. mechanics to figure out. Uh, 
That's all my Anything report. Else? <coughs> all right. Does anyone else have anything? Tim, Mitch. No. Uh, was there a discussion last week or the week before about getting a hold of Dave Woodward from Alarms Unlimited to possibly well, we, put I wondered. Margie was maybe the panic button. I haven't gotten something. that far, but we uh, Ken has done a little research on another aspect of what a security system might entail and uh, so that is we'll be working on that. a work in progress yep yeah. I'm and still secu doing. security cameras at Sam's and BJ you get out eight of them for a few hundred dollars I've been uh, I have been doing some more homework on the constable position gathering more facts and eventually I'll put together I'm hoping to put together a plan just for something that we can compare apples and apples to and mm -hmm. move forward with that. I did get, um, in fact, I just opened it up um, and I'll we'll copy it off for you, is that the town clerk down in Pownell sent me their budget for constables. And I got that. Line I, item. You got it. I, okay. I got the cost. What is it by chance? I think it's 40 something thousand. Um, 27000 in salary. They have a 32-hour a week, so if really they consider full-time constable. Yeah, when you, 32 hours, they have to pay better. They pay, they, they have insurance, health insurance, uh, police liability insurance, equipment, vehicle insurance. And I, um, I know it costs they pay twelve hundred dollars or twelve hundred dollars a year to the Bennington Police Station for dispatch and evidence. How much is that? A hundred dollars a month. A hundred a month? Twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred. Twelve okay. That wasn't listed on here. Um Margie, I'll just I'll give this to you and then you could make but Mitch probably has it already, but Well I I don't have the I didn't I was gonna that was on my list to talk to Al. Well maybe, you know, Margie can make copies for all of us um, any Carl no, anything nothing. okay and that was the only thing I was going to bring up was the um, that correspondence I received tonight um, okay then I would ask for a motion to adjourn so moved. Second. Second. thank Third. you all very much